being nominated for the Academy Awards is a pretty pretty hefty nom nomination, I'd say. What's it like working on a program like that, where you really have to uh, you have to have something in advance, but you also have to be quick on your feet? That's the greatest thing about writing on the Oscars is being backstage with Billy Crystal all night, coming up with what you know something something great happens. What are you going to say about it? And you can sort of hedge your bets on certain awards. You can look at trends. You can see who's won the Writers Guild, the Directors Guild, PGA awards. Um, but you look for those great moments that that happen live, and you have to react to them. And there's no faster ad libber in the world than Billy Crystal, and the fact that we get to be back there when he's coming up with the gold and maybe kind of help that process along is fantastic. Sure. Well, and I, I know with the return of Billy Crystal, mm -hmm. that must have, it must have been not only fun to work with him mm -hmm. and to craft material alongside of him, mm -hmm. I imagine, sure. but there must have been a certain amount of pressure, too, to kind of highlight his abilities where he hadn't been involved for, for a number of years. Yeah, sure. What was it like, you know, being one of the writers for the show and, okay. and working with that. The, the first Academy Award show I did was in 1998. It was the 70th Academy Awards with Billy. Billy was the one who put me into the award show business. And it's been not only really rewarding to me, but so much fun to get back together and kind of create that bond again, having done, I think, four Oscar shows with Billy. And there was a certain amount of pressure this year because there was the big eight-year gap, I think, since the last time he hosted. For those eight years, every host who came along, no matter how great they were or off the mark they were, everybody said, please, next year, bring back Billy. And then we came back, and I thought did a really great show, and a lot of people were saying, they did the same stuff. So it was kind of it was kind of tough the next day to see, see some of that in print when we worked so hard on it and spent so much time trying to figure out whether we try to reinvent the wheel completely or kind of do some of the greatest hits. Mm -hmm. And um, and I think we I think we accomplished both. I mean, a lot of the, uh, the comments that I saw from viewers the next day and the day after and that whole week were how happy they were that he was back. And I hope he does it again. I don't know if he'll do it this year or coming up, but uh, I have to do at least one more. Event. And I'd love to see him get to, I think it'll be 10 shows if he does it one more time. I think that'd be fantastic. And, and you know, it's, it's interesting actually thinking about seeing that criticism by mm -hmm. some folks out there, right. but then also having the uh, TV Academy recognize you Absolutely. for the achievement. So That's it's a the nice great thing. I mean, I sort of am nominated for the Oscars and for the Tony Awards. And last year's Tony's was really kind of a, an edgy show. It opened with Neil Patrick Harris singing It's Not Just For Gays Anymore. Which he won an Emmy for. He won for hosting, and the, the show won last uh, week. And uh, David Jabberbaum and Adam Schlesinger wrote It's Not Just For Gays Anymore. They won. And that was really sweet because there were people who said, you're not going to do this song. You're just not going to open the Tonys with this song. But the chairman of the American Theater Wing stood behind us, CBS stood behind us, and said, guys, go for it. Absolutely. It was the right year to do it. Book of Mormon was the big musical, so the, the Trey and Matt sensibility was in the room already. Right. And Neil's the one guy who can do that song um, in that room. And uh, and it's I, I kind of expected that nomination. I thought it wouldn't be um, out of place if we were nominated, but to get that in addition to the Oscar show, which we worked so hard on, um, is really great recognition. Let me ask you just one more question, sure. and I'll let you go. Oh, I'm not too long-winded for you. Oh no, no, no you're complete answers. No, no, you're perfect. It, it's fascinating to hear. It's you know with the Tonys and with the Oscars, there's so much attention to the rating and the numbers sure. and what's happening and the demographics. What is, does that, do you just try to be true to the material that's being presented and, and work towards the benefit of the show or do you have to try to incorporate those concerns that the networks have with the material? I think the networks, when you're when you're putting together a show like the Tonys and the Oscars, certainly the networks want to bring in as many viewers as they can. They want to bring in as many young viewers as they can. They want as many ideas as you can come up with that will bring in that audience. But at the end of the day, you're giving awards to 
certain nominees. And with the Oscars, you can have a year where the show is really great, it's really funny, but nobody at home has seen the movies. They're so esoteric. Same thing with the Tony Awards. The, you're Really, you're playing to an audience of thousands of people who have seen these Broadway shows. Right. And fortunately, the Tony Awards is such an entertainment packed night that we have a lot of opportunities to really give Broadway exposure to the rest of the country. And I hope that it inspires some of the six or seven million people who watch the show. If they haven't been to a show before, go see live theater. Go to New York or see it in their own hometown. I think that's really, really important. They're probably the most rewarding thing for me.